How can change affect or threaten our values and identities? Hi, I'm Amy Wanninger from Lead at Any Level. I'm coming to you today to talk about page six of the Moving from Panic to Purpose Companion Workbook. Now, this is something that's available on Amazon for, I don't know, 10 bucks, I think, or um, $2.99 on Kindle, even though Kindle is the worst way to get a workbook, but that's okay. You can, <laughs> you can work through it with me in your own notebook if you like. Um, so we've already talked about in this series, um, with the context of the COVID-19 pandemic sort of looming over everyone's shoulders, um, we've already talked about the change in broader context, the um, feelings, both the negative and positive feelings that we may be feeling right now, and the changes in behaviors we and others may be noticing, not, in our, not just in ourselves, but in other people around us as well. Today, we're going to talk about our values and identities in relationship to change. The reason this is important when I do diversity and inclusion work, I talk about how values, identities, experiences, and judgments about other people all work together to form a worldview that we come from. And we tend to, as human beings who are really good at pattern matching and not great at multitasking, we tend to let ourselves choose experiences that reinforce our values, our identities, and judgments. And over time, that makes our worldview very small, it creates bubbles around us where we're surrounded by people who feel and think the way we do about most things. Now, if you think about conflict, especially in the workplace, typically conflict is stemming from different prioritizations of values. So we all have, we all have different values and we all have shared values, right, in different contexts. But the way those values stack up and the way we rank and prioritize them, when, that, when those priorities come into conflict with someone else's priorities, that's where we, we tend to have some trouble. So what I want to talk to you today about is kind of step one of undoing your thought patterns. Our thought patterns or our unconscious biases are those things that we, the decisions we make without realizing we're making them, they are the... Um, kind of the shortcuts we take in our brain. And if you think about water being, you know, running down a hillside and carving a stream, the more the water runs, the deeper that, that groove is cut. And it's not unless we divert the water and forge a new path that we can really take a different route down the mountain. And the same is true with our thoughts. So we, we need to build up different um, paths of synapses and different neural pathways in our brain so that we can actually kind of stretch our thinking and stretch the way we get from point A to point B. The first step in that process is to put yourself on notice. And that's what I'm talking about on chapter six. What I mean by putting yourself on notice is not just identifying the feelings that you're feeling in a given moment, but also digging a little deeper into those feelings. What values are those feelings uh, upholding? number one. And number two, what identities are your values protecting? So the three questions for today are number one, list some of your most cherished values. Now you may value things like independence, autonomy, self-reliance, or you may prioritize values like community, family, um, you know, kind of communal aspects, right? You may value things like, um, you know, maybe you're, you see yourself as an extrovert and you value um, time with other people, right? That's something that's important to you. You value being out in the world and being active. And so for me, I think my cherished values that are really hitting me right now in my feelings around COVID-19 are number one, this sense of self-determination because it's really important to me. I believe that I'm the captain of, the ship, of my own ship, right? Um, number two, I value um, my family. And I usually tell my kids that I feel like it, my job is not to be their friend, but it's to get them to adulthood safely and as responsible people, right? Those are, 
that's my job as far as I, as far as being a parent goes. Um, and then probably the third value that I have right now that's, that's um, weighing on me a little bit. We talked a little bit the other day about um, my tendency to self-sabotage and procrastinate when I'm stressed um, is that I, I value hard work. I value grit and determination and just, you know, getting the job done. And this uh, situation that we're all in, this being home and, you know, not being able to go out and, and do what we, we feel like we need to do for ourselves, uh, for our work, for our families, is really hard for me in those, sen in those senses. Um, but this, so that's the first question is just list your values. What are the values that are coming up for you, especially in relation to the feelings and behaviors we've already talked about? Question number two is what identity or identities do these values support and protect? Now for me, that's pretty easy. So self-determination hits to my identity as a business owner. Um, family speaks to my identity as a mother and a daughter and a wife. And hard work um, speaks to my identity as someone who um, grew up in working class, uh, rural Southern Indiana and was able to, you know, kind of break into um, more professional white collar work, but also someone who, you know, really works hard. I mean, I, I do, I try really hard to, to be productive and be prolific and help a lot of people. And so those are the identities that I'm really focused on right now. The third question is, does this change challenge any of the values or identities you've listed above? And the answer for me is absolutely. So it is difficult for me to work and be as productive as, um, as I'd like to be with my whole family home with me all day long. Um, but it also conflicts with my identity as a mother because I see it as my job to keep my family safe. And I can't guarantee I can do that right now. Not that we can ever guarantee that, but there's a lot of fear around that right now. Can I really do everything I can to keep my family safe? What if it's not enough? Um, and then, you know, finally, you know, going back to the self-determination piece, it's hard to feel like you're in control when you can't leave your house, when you can't carry on your normal activities. And so, you know, my identity as a business owner, especially, you know, in an uncertain economy might, might be threatened by that. So, although, I'm fine, but, but you know, th these are the worries in our heads, right? So that's all I want you to talk, to think about today. Number one, let's review. Number one, list some of your most cherished values. Number two, what identity or identities do these values support and protect? And number three, does this change, whatever change you're dealing with right now, whether it's the COVID-19 pandemic or some other change, challenge any of the values or identities you listed. If this has been valuable to you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, check back tomorrow, and I'll have another video for you. If you are interested, again, you can get this workbook on Amazon or on my website, um, shop.leadatanylevel.com. And if this is a program that you might want at your organization to help employees deal with, the current crisis, working from home for the first time, whatever that might be, um, drop me a note, email me, put a comment in, and let me know. And let's talk about how we can make this a virtual training for your workforce so they can move from panic to purpose, um, be more productive than they would otherwise be, and maybe lessen their stress a little bit so they can show up for their families in important ways. Thanks, everyone.